Hi, I'm Joe Carswell with Teach Construction. This lesson is all about squaring in construction and why we care about it. So let's get right into it. When I say squaring in construction, I'm talking about a 90 degree angle. You'll see it everywhere. It makes for good building. And we want, whenever we have two lines or surfaces, that 90 degrees between them. Whether you're talking about a wall panel and how it meets a floor, we want this wall panel to be perfectly vertical or plumb. When the floor is level, that makes our 90 degree angle here. You could have a concrete form. We want that to be 90 degrees in all the corners so that when we build on that, we have a nice accurate building that we're making on that. Any of these openings, whether it's a window opening or a door opening, if they're not square or 90 degrees in all of these corners, then the door or window that fits in it will not work properly. Whenever you have wall panels that come together, we also want 90 degrees. If this wall is tweaked to one side or the other, we no longer have our 90 degree angles here, and we're causing problems with ourselves later on with this building. Let's focus on this wall panel model here. This is a scaled down wall panel. It's 24 inches on center with our stud layout. We have a door roof opening and a window roof opening. Whenever you're framing doors and windows, you want those openings to be square. These are obviously rectangles. When I say square, I mean that all four corners of the opening should equal 90 degrees. So when I say square, I mean 90 degrees. So our first method to measure our rough openings, whether they're square, would be plumb, which is perfectly vertical, and level, which is perfectly horizontal. Any vertical surface like this, we can use a tool called a level to measure those two things, level and plumb. So if we can measure this line, bottom edge and top edge, and they become level, or we can measure them to be level, and then we can measure the left and right sides and determine that they're perfectly plumb, that will tell us that these angles are 90 degrees in all four corners. When we're framing, we constantly have to check for square. This wall panel will get moved around a lot before it ends up in its final place, and it tends to rack or hinge back and forth. So once it's in its final place, we need to make sure it's square. We can do that using a tool called a level. This will check for level and plumb. We'll check for the lower edge to be level. We'll check for the upper edge to be level, and then both sides to be plumb. And remember, if we do have level top and bottom of our rough opening, and then a plumb left and right sides, we know that these corners are all 90 degrees. Checking for square with a level works great as long as you're working on a vertical surface like a wall. If we're working on horizontal surfaces, which we do a lot, our level won't work anymore. We need to use other tools, other methods, and that could be using a square. This is a small speed square. We have larger ones. There's a 12 inch. A framing square is even larger. These tools are built with a 90 degree angle in them. So we can always use that to reference, to check any corner that we're working with and see how close to 90 degrees that corner is. So if I didn't have a level, I could use a plumb bob to figure out a perfectly vertical line, say this edge of this rough opening. I could use my angle tool to determine 90 degrees, and I would know, based on this line being plumb and this 90 degree angle, I would know that this line was perfectly level. This is a certainty. We know that if this line is perfectly vertical or plumb, and that this is 90 degrees, this line here has to be level. On the other side, if we know this line is perfectly level and this is 90 degrees, this line has to be plumb. So a little secret here, what we just did was geometry. And the good news here is we have one more method to determine square. We can use math to do that. Don't be afraid, we're going to use a little geometry to solve this problem, and we call it the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem is an equation that works with a triangle, and the equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's go through those parts. If we have our legs of our triangle here, we'll call this one a, we'll call this one b, and then the line that connects the two, or the hypotenuse, would be c. So a squared plus b squared 
will equal c squared. So I don't know about you, but at this moment, you might be a little nervous about that. We're getting into the math here. In construction, like many times in construction, we have cheats or easy ways to do this where we don't need a calculator and we don't have to go through a lot of complicated math. And we would call this cheat that we use in the field a three, four, five triangle. This is constructed using that Pythagorean theorem. So let's break down this three, four, five triangle here and go through its parts. A three, four, five triangle spells out the length of units of each one of the legs. So we will have a three unit leg, which will be this leg here. We will have a four unit leg, which will be a longer one. And then our five unit will be our hypotenuse that will connect the two. So if we always keep that ratio or proportion of three here, four here, and five here, it's going to lock in this angle always at 90 degrees. Using inches for units, we can lay out a three, four, five triangle here. I would measure for the short leg out three inches, make a mark. I would measure up on this longer leg, four inches, I'd make a mark. And if I was able to measure five inches between those two marks here for my hypotenuse, I would know that I had a 90 degree angle in this corner. If it was more than five inches here, that would mean this angle was growing to more than 90 degrees. And if it was less than five inches between those two points, my angle is going to shrink to less than 90 degrees. So the beauty of our three, four, five triangle is we can make it grow as much as we want by multiplying three, four, and five by a certain number. If we wanted to double it, we would multiply each one of those numbers by two. We'd get six for the short leg, eight for the longer leg, and we would have 10 for the hypotenuse. It still works and creates this 90 degree angle or verifies that. We could even triple it. So if we went to three times three for this one to nine inches, and we went three times four inches on the longer leg, we'd end up with 12 inches, and we would expect the hypotenuse to be three times five, which would be 15. So let's use that nine, 12, 15 relationship, basically tripling our three, four, five, and verify this angle. So I've made a mark here at nine inches. I have a mark here at 12 inches. So now this hypotenuse should measure to 15. What I have here is more than 15. I've got 15 and 5 eighths. So what that tells me is that this is longer, which makes this angle more than 90 degrees. So we can adjust this and then measure it again. And what I end up with here is a measurement of under 14. So we're looking for 15. Now we're less than 15. That tells me that this angle is now less than 90 degrees. So until I get these two points to land right on 15, I know that I'm not at 90. Once I am right at this 15 inches for both points, this angle right here is exactly 90 degrees. That's the beauty of our three, four, five triangle. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you've found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. You may be wondering when this would come into play, when you would use this. If this was two form boards that were in the field. You were getting ready to pour concrete. You wanted to verify if you had a 90 degree corner in here. You could take these measurements, pull them out, pull your hypotenuse measurement and verify this is 90 degrees. If it's not, you would need to make that adjustment surely before you poured that concrete. You're always checking for square in the field. This could be two walls that are coming together. We're looking at this from above in plan view. This wall needs to be 90 degrees to the other wall. And the way you would check for that would be to measure out three feet on this wall. You'd measure four feet out on this wall. And then to connect those two points, you should get a five foot measurement that would tell you 
that this is 90 degrees in here. Of course, if you wanted a more accurate measurement and the walls were longer, you could multiply three feet by two, you could get six feet. This would be eight feet multiplied by two, and you would end up with a 10 foot measurement here. So there you have it. That's the three, four, five triangle. And congratulations, you not only learned that, you also now understand the Pythagorean theorem. But there's more. We have other ways that we can verify square. And the next method is called equal diagonals. And we're going to do that on anything that has four sides. That's either a rectangle, or a square. So this equal diagonal method works like this. If we can take our tape measure and measure from this corner to the opposite corner, and we can make that dimension equal the measurement from this corner to this corner, then that tells us a lot about this rectangle. It tells us, number one, that all of these corners are 90 degrees, exactly 90 degrees. And it also tells us that the left and right side are parallel and that our top and bottom edges are also parallel. So I have another model here. And just imagine that this is our rough opening, this window rough opening that's in our wall model here. We have our four sides and we need to measure corner to corner in both directions and then figure out those measurements and compare them. So if I was to measure this corner to this corner, I have 25 and a quarter. If I'm pulling that measurement here, I'm 25 and a half. I don't have equal measurements. And what that's telling me is that these angles are not 90 degrees. I can pull these measurements and figure out if these are parallel, right? These lines are parallel. 18 inches top and bottom. But as you can see, that has nothing to do with these corner angles. As I move it this way, I'm shortening this diagonal and I'm lengthening this diagonal. Also notice these angles in here are also changing at the same time. So ideally, I'll end up with a measurement here of say 26 and an eighth, and I've got 24 and a half. Still not there, so let's move it this direction. That makes this one longer. And this is a back and forth kind of thing. We do this all the time in the field. And I am at 25 and an eighth, and then 25 and a half. I'm almost there. So if I push it just a little bit more, I should be perfect. I'm 25 and a quarter, and then I'm 25 and a quarter. So at this point, my diagonals are exactly matching at 25 and a quarter. And this tells me, because I know that these sides are parallel, that my corners here are all 90 degrees. So with just these two measurements, we know a lot of information. We know that our top and our bottom edges are parallel. We know that our sides are parallel. We know that each one of these corners is 90 degrees. And if we can verify that this edge here is level, we also know that these sides are plumb. We know that because of that earlier conversation about our 90 degree angle and our relationship between level and plumb. So that's a lot of information about squaring and 90 degrees in construction. Trust me, you'll use this in the field all the time. I would recommend watching this lesson more than one time. Really important information. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.